why that is so is because God is a holy God. Yes, yes. And he's a righteous God. Yes, yes. That means he does what's right. That's right. So in reading this, mm -mm. Uh, he also had laws. And I want to read the introduction from Leviticus out of the fit? message Bible. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to speak in this. Why can't it fit? He gives warnings. That's right. He gives what he desires for us to be and do. Because other than that, how could he judge us? Right. How could he correct us if he doesn't give any kind of instructions of what he expects? That's right. So because in Leviticus, where he laid out, I'm not going to read it, I'm just going to read the introduction. It explains why he expected these people to do what he asked them to do. So one of the stubborn, enduring habits of the human race is to insist on a de decimating yes, God. We want to make it what we want it to be. Right, right. We are determined to tame him. We figure out ways to harness God to our projects. We try to reduce God to a size that conveniently fits our plans, ambitions, and tastes. Okay? But our scriptures are, look at me, read with my glasses. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why I can't see it down up here. Fantasies to, to do is to cripple us. Leviticus is a 
start of a much teaching and long training that continues to be adapted and reworked in every country and culture where God is forming a saved people to live as he created them to live. Holy God is holy. The first thing that strikes us as we read Leviticus in this light is that these hope that this holy God is actually present with us and virtually very detailed in our lives is affected by the presence of his holy God. Nothing in us, our relationships or our environment is left out. The second thing is that God provides a way the sacrifices and feasts and Sabbaths he established his own. You remember the wheat day, the barley offering, all these things yes. he established yes. to show you that there is another way. You have your way, the right way, and God's way. Because you know, I can do it. I, 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 you know, and that's what he tried to get us away from, the I. The second thing is that God provides a way that sacrifices and feasts and Sabbaths to bring everyone in and about us into his holy presence, transformed in the fiery blaze of the holy. It is an awesome thing to come into the presence, and we, like ancient Israel, stand in his presence at every moment. God can see Psalm 139 is presence. The Lord is not dwelling in a tent or a house in our neighborhood. But he makes the habitation in us and among us as believers and says, I am holy, you be holy. That's 1 Peter 1 and 6, citing Leviticus 11 and 44, 45, 19 and 2, and 20 and 7. At your time, you can read these references. Once we realize this, the seemingly endless details and instructions of Leviticus become signposts of good news to us. If we have a direction where we're going and how to get there, you are more confident in your life. God cares that much about the details of our lives. Willing everything in and about us and to the transformation that St. Paul later commended. So here's what I want you to do. God help you. Take every take your everyday ordinary life your sleeping eating going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering mm -hmm. embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for you mm -hmm. don't become so well adjusted to your Thank culture you. that you fit into it without even thinking mm -hmm. instead fix your attention on God You'll be changed from the inside out, readily recognizing what he wants from you and quickly responding to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develop well-formed maturity in you, according to Romans 12, 1 and 2. Okay, that's the introduction. Now, I've read that because it gives us a, a outline of how these Canaanites and, um, yeah, Canaanites and Amorites were living. They were nomads. That means they didn't have a place that they actually dwelt. They moved around. So they were everywhere because they would move around. Now, everything has a spirit about it. So as Sister Elder Debbie was saying, there is a spirit. We have a spirit. We are a spirit, we, and we have a spirit, yes. okay? Yes. Some of us have spirit of anger, spirit of lying. You have other spirits in you, but you are a spirit. Mm -hmm. So these people, uh, these people had uh, this spirit about them, because every time they would move around, there were another set of gods that other people were worshiping. And they would move these people out the way and take on their gods and make them their gods. So they kept adding gods to what they were already worshiping that was not the true and living God. So that caused a lot of problems because now they're not doing what they were them to do, which was worship and serve him because he's the true and living God. So we had questions. you to address why was God so hate what was God's hatred for these seven nations so fierce because he's a righteous God and being and being a right doing God he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked he wanted if you can picture like a stronghold Jericho was a stronghold remember
number, and the guy gave them instructions how to tear that stronghold down. Well, uh, when you have a fort or an enemy that you want to attack, they have like a central place where they do their business. So it wasn't that he was just going to every house and destroying everybody. What he had said, the main hub, hub where they're dwelling at, I want that to destroy. Because that's where the, 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 the lies and the deception was going to people. Because we can be influenced. So if you destroy the main hub, you know, that's utterly destroying that, okay? So he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. That's Ezekiel 33 and 11. God sent prophets to warn uh, Nineveh because mm -hmm. they were worshiping idols. And remember, Jonah got upset because, yeah, you want to warn them, and they're going to change, and then I'm going to be I'm mad because he wanted them destroyed, you know. The story. Because I don't have time. Y'all know the background. I'm talking to saints that didn't read their Bible, right? Yeah. Okay. And then in Genesis, where God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and how Abraham, yeah, Abraham asked God, don't destroy. You can find 10 right. Yeah, you know, he yeah, went down. Yeah. If you do, you have to destroy the good with the bad. Yeah. And that's where we are now. There's bad. Everybody that come to church ain't saved. Amen. Everybody talk about Jesus ain't saved. Amen. They say everybody talking about heaven ain't going. Amen. It is a lifestyle. Well, these Canaanites and Amorites did not have the lifestyle. They were worshiping false gods and idols. They said, what are the evils that they that, that God detests that he didn't want his people to model after? Well, they worship, they kill children. It was children's sacrifices that they did. Uh, some of them uh, worship animals to the point they were having sex with them. So that was uh, detestable. Um, yeah, abomination. He didn't like that. So it was things that they were doing that he didn't want to keep influence the people as they moved about because they're moving about. They don't have a place that they actually dwell. The uh, Amorite, mm, Amorites and the Canaanites are interchangeable because the Amorites moved into Canaan. So they were like Canaanite Amorites because that they were interchangeable. So that's what they were living. So yes, they were different people but the same spirit. Okay, the third question was what shall we understand in 2024 that the whole world is embracing? They're embracing their own God. They're setting up what they want to worship, if anything. Sex, drinking, anything that they want to do. You can't tell them anything. It's hard to witness. If you ask them, they say, oh, yeah, I'm saved. I believe in the, uh, the big brother. Uh, I believe... <laughs> You know, but no lifestyle, nothing changes about them. Um, in Genesis, it started when, Genesis 12, when God told Abraham to, Abram, to come out from his family. When you come to God, you're going to, I mentioned Sunday morning, it's some things you're going to have to come out of. It ain't right. He had to go to where he did not have a clue where he was going. And God just told him, listen to me and follow, right? Mm -hmm. So that's in 12. Uh, there is, these people also wanted a self-salvation, what I want to believe, what I want to do. There is only one God. Oh, yeah. He's only one Savior. Yeah. Yeah, you cannot save yourself. Yeah. If you could save yourself, then you yeah. wouldn't need God. Right. But they had their own gods, their own idols, their own images that they wanted to use and live by. Well, we can't do that because there's only one God. So, the next thing is, you can't make God into your image. He wants us to be in his image, in his likeness. Right? So, these people did that. They would take, like I said, take animals and wear, uh, do, um, yeah, hairdressers of animals because they worship animals and things. Well, we frown our nose up at them, but what were we worshiping? 
What do we need to be set aside from? What do we need to put down? What do we need? Cigarettes, drinking. It's a whole lot of things we were. You say, I didn't worship them. You couldn't do without them. That's, that's an idol. That's an idol. So what God is saying, what, what I believe is saying, and you mentioned the same scripture, Deuteronomy 20, 1 through 20. And when you get a chance, read that. Uh, there's other things in this world that I don't even know about. I see the commercial and I said I was going to write in because they showed this commercial about uh, HIV and then they showed men kissing. That's pornography. Why we got to watch it on TV? Why, why we letting that pass through? That same spirit it's that same idol, that same thing they make and the same thing they presented before you that is all right and it's not. So we got to be mindful. God has given us instructions. Uh, if we don't obey him, the same fate will happen to us. Those who reject God and his son, Jesus Christ, will die. Then we'll kill you. Don't nobody have to kill you. Sin will. Disobedience will. Because all of us have sinned and come short to the glory of God. That's why he came, that we may have life and have it more abundant. Amen. 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 their own truth is so far fetched till you have to reel them in settle them clean them up before God cleans them up almost you know and mentally wise um, because they uh, they've lost all sense of truth that's, that's always existed, but we've had choices uh, just as these that we speak of as to what whether or not we would believe and accept the truth. And so uh, in looking at these uh, really seven, they were all, they were different, but they were of the same and, and they were even descendants of, of Canaan, which was uh, son of Abraham. Right. Ham. That's right. Ham. Right, yeah. Thank you. And um, was amazing as Elder Debbie said, you give a little space to the enemy. That's all he needs. And that spirit of deception is try to deceive one way or another either even in our believing truth to try to twist that up uh, to make
things that might appeal to us uh, naturally or fleshly uh, seem okay and, and get you in a spot that you begin to uh, little by little subtle you know, this word says subtlety begin to see things different contrary to God's truth contrary to God's way um, and he does it and I'm not giving him credit I want to, to us to understand uh, as it was stated, you know, he's, God is holy and requires a holy people. There's a holy standard that goes with it. Holiness. You know, for so many years, I thought, I thought holiness was a denomination. <laughs> it did. You know, um, there, there's a lot of things that and that's why you, you don't stop walking with God. You don't stop huh? getting in the word to understand his ways and to know him and allow him to lead and guide you because sometimes, some, in some cases, I'm, I'm just going to be frank. Some of the things I was taught was way off out there in left field somewhere. And thank God for Jesus. Thank God for truth. Thank God for freedom. Thank God for different places and different uh, ministries. Well, God knows how to get the truth to you. Amen. you know, and we don't, we yet don't have it all, but it's 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 contained in these sixes. And from that perspective, I think we can have it all in terms of knowing. Because God is love. You know, and it's just, it's just over to a Union Hall and thought to handle some union business of an upcoming event and found out I didn't that it wasn't necessary. But while I was there, I got a chance to share some things. Amen. You know God's good just like that. Yeah, too. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna bring we gonna bring God in the picture. <laughs> we we're not gonna sit up and, 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 and look at all this miraculous power and splendor of God and not talk about it. And not acknowledge him and not give him praise. And so we shared the truth of God's word. You see, God, he's coming after every soul. Every soul. And we can't be selfish with what we have and who we have. We have no right to be selfish. Because he's concerned about everything. Every soul. And I begin to share some things. To the secretary. We need to talk about this. Yes. 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 Bring it back to me. How can. How can. Men see this. Greatness. This and that. Yeah. That's. That's something. He said. He said. That's the truth. <laughs> I said, he, he's in control. And he's from that point, though, getting back to this, his promises are true and yea and amen. amen. And even though it appears that it's not existing, Abraham said, thousand some odd years. He promised that God was true. But sometimes we're ignorant. We won't pick up the book and read. And ask God for understanding. Revelation knowledge 
We act like sometimes we don't want to walk. Now he'll save us from all kinds of stuff. Just like he did it. And yet later, they were still because they disobeyed. They got duped. Many of them got duped. And he knew what happened, yes. And even still today, he has mercy. Calling them back to himself. These folks were village people. They were village people. There's foundation. His foundation in us allows us to not be moved. The truth that we obtain by way of the Holy Ghost sustains us, sets us in a ray and in alignment for victory in our lives. But we can get off track. We can get off track. They got off track. All those that were there to distract them, even though they were victorious, and, but, but they were deceived, some of them, by way of not adhering to the instructions given to them. And we've been looking at the instructions, the rules, the laws of the kingdom of God for our understanding that we can apply them and walk them out. There's not a promise that God won't keep Promise is yours. It's mine. I don't care what it looks like. I want to say this and then sit down. I thought I was going back to work too soon. But I had to remember what God said. He said, I got you, and I've got this. You could find it. I don't know if you remember, but you did. But it was the first thing I heard when I was able to get up off the ground after being hit. So now it's no different. It's no different, and I'm watching things happen. people. 